everyone and welcome to Thoro Newspaper Analysis, the daily newspaper analysis, which is brought to you by Law Seco. So today we will discuss two articles. Both the articles are from the Hindu newspaper. The first article is, it is getting from bad to worse for women workers. So as we know that in various aspects and various fields, we have been discussing the impact, basically the negative impact of the COVID-19. So specifically, this article talks about the impact on the women workers that has been brought by the COVID-19 situation. Secondly, we have this article again from the Hindu, which is titled as Restructuring the Tribunal System. So this article debates around the idea of having a national tribunals commission, which would actually bring in the administration of all the tribunals in the country at one place. So it will be critically discussed in the article whether or not is it a good idea to have the NTC. And finally, we have the news in flash column. This analysis is presented to you by me. My name is Shaiva Khan, and I have completed my law degree from Uttaranchal University in the year 2019. I have been a national debater and a public speaker, and here at Law Seco, I work as the current affairs expert and manager for free content and outreach. If you wish to reach out to me or connect with me, you can definitely find me on my Twitter as well as LinkedIn handles, which are available in the description box. Also, if you wish to download the PDF of today's slides, you can download it from the uh, Telegram group, the link to which is available in the description box below. With this, let's see what is the multiple choice question from day before yesterday's discussion. Cyclone Tokte or Tote, as you like to pronounce it, is nearing the coast of your options are Sri Lanka, India, Indonesia, or Myanmar. If you know the answer, please put it down in the comment section below. This is the descriptive question of the day. Do you think that having a national tribunals commission would make the tribunal administration smoother and more efficient in India? Critically examine. Please remember, whenever this term critically is used in your paper or the question, it asks you to think or debate around both the sides of the argument that is for as well as against the given motion. Let's start a discussion for the first article of the day, which talks about the pandemic and disproportionate burden on the women. So the women workers have borne a disproportionate burden of the COVID-19 pandemic as per the available data. Now, as we know that the impact of COVID-19 has not only been on the health sector, on education, employment, economy, and thus it has been seen that a lot of people have had to face the brunt of COVID-19. In this situation, when we talk about the employment or the system of workers or the working people or the working class of the country, suddenly or surprisingly what has come to the forefront is that the women workers who were earlier engaged into some kinds of employment activities, they have had to face a greater brunt or a greater burden of the COVID-19 pandemic. So when we talk about this widening gap between the men and women workers, let's discuss the situation prior to 2020. So only 18% of working age women were employed as compared to 75% men. So if at all we try to say that the situation before the pandemic was very much, it was a utopian situation or it was the best of its kind and everything was sorted in the society and there was equal opportunities of employment for both men and women, that isn't true either. So as we know that even before 2020, so even before we had this pandemic in our country, even before this lockdown was proclaimed in the country, only 18% of the working age women were engaged in employment as compared to or as against a percentage of 75% of men. Now, definitely there can be various reasons that can be attributed to this, like the lack of jobs, restrictive social norms, increasing burden of household work, etc. Now, in this situation, let's tackle all of these reasons one by one. When we talk about the lack of jobs, so there are two faces or there are two things that are attached in this one particular problem. One, that yes, there is a lack of employment opportunities for everybody in the country, be it a man or a woman, the jobs per se in total number are very less available. Let's see that there are 1000 people, let's say uh, both men and women, cumulatively are 1000 men and women who are looking for a particular job. In such a situation, let's say only 600 jobs are available. So already what we are seeing is a lack of job availability. Now, amongst these 600 jobs, 
what do you think that what kinds of jobs do we have would that not determine as to who would do that job definitely yes for example in india even the uber driving or the ola driving etc such jobs even till the recent times were seen to be a job of a kind that only a man could do maybe jobs like the plumbing maybe the jobs like that of iti technicians and stuff they were the kinds of jobs which we due to our patriarchal system of the society we had in our minds that only a man could be performing these jobs or maybe riding a bus riding a truck driving a bus or driving a truck or these jobs so what happens is that due to this mental blockage in the first situation and even many a times due to the lack of safety and security in the job as well what happens is that these already less available jobs which were let's say only 600 for 1000 people who were seeking jobs the jobs that are actually available or that are actually suitable for women even get shrunk down so let's say out of these 650 600 only maybe let's say 300 or 200 jobs would be such that would be available for women so that is one great problem which we say a problem within a problem that exists for the women in employment then obviously we have the restrictive social norms let's say if at all a girl you know she's found to drive a truck or she's found to do some work let's say maybe that's related to a carpentership or a, a, a you know a blacksmith or something like this we have these restrictive social norms in our minds and society set in such a way that we would really want to restrict the women to not do certain kinds of jobs and this ultimately leads to them to not to be able to participate in the working labor force and thirdly we discussed about increasing burden of household work for this i would really like to give a very natural and a practical example to all of you for example we live in a family where we have you know the parents the mother and the father and then we have some children let's say we have a brother and a sister so what happens is that some guests are about to come to our home and in such situation the mother obviously as a natural option she goes to the kitchen and prepares the meals and stuff now if she needs assistance with that work who do you think would be expected to give a hand in her mother's work definitely i am sure the name that would be coming to your mind would be that of the daughter so this is unfortunately the patriarchal system in our entire society and our burden of household work that naturally women are the one out of whom it is expected that they would leave on to their professional careers professional jobs and everything and they would step forward to take up the household work and household responsibilities and same uh, has happened in the situation of covid-19 as well wherein the situation the burdens on the households have increased wherein the children's have come to home homes they are not going to schools anymore the students have returned to their homes so in a way the burden on the household has increased and ultimately this burden has increased on the women of that household so i hope that these points have a clear into your mind by now so if at all we consider the situation now after the time 2020 so let's consider about the pandemic which had worsened the situation so let's say please if you pay attention even the topic of the article the title of the article talks about from bad to worse so it is not from something good to bad rather it acknowledges that the situation was already bad and thanks to the pandemic that it has even become worsened so after the 2020 period 61% of the male workers were unaffected by the lockdown as compared to 19% women and 47% employed women who lost jobs during the lockdown never returned to the work as compared to only 7% men so for example if 47% of percent of the employed women lost their jobs due to the lockdown they did not return back or they were not able to return back to their jobs after the lockdown was open as against to just 7% men and nearly half of the women workers withdrew from the workforce as compared to only 11% men and women tended to lose work disproportionately so that is why we are seeing that this pandemic as well has not been even equal in the case of men and women and women have had to face greater brunt of the pandemic in terms of employment opportunities as well and if at all we discuss about the burden of domestic work in a greater detail so the household responsibilities have increased for women as schools were closed and everyone is confined to their homes yes we are 
So if at all we talk about the India Working Survey of 2020, the number of hours spent in domestic work increased many fold for women. And as per the data for February and March 2020, only 10 to 20% women reported working two to four hours on domestic work. And according to September 2020, it increased to 50%. So just within matters of few months, you can see that a percentage of just 10 to 20% tends to increase to 50%. And thus, this article also mentions some steps that are needed in this particular direction. So it talks about the expansion of Manrega. Now, as we have discussed several times before, Manrega stands for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. So the, as name itself is suggesting, it is an act of the government which provides the employment guarantee for 100 days in a year. And that is why it says that the scope of Manrega should be expanded so that even the women can see easy jobs and they can seek the jobs and they can avail the jobs easily as compared to any other platform. Secondly, introduction of urban employment guarantee for women. So definitely the women in the urban scope and the urban spheres as well should be given some employment guarantee. And thirdly, the COVID hardship allowance should also be given that whatever hardships they have had to face in their professional careers because of the COVID lockdown or the COVID situation, the allowances should be given for that purpose. With this, let's discuss about the second article of the day, which talks about restructuring tribunal system. So the center has abolished several appellate tribunals and authorities and transferred their jurisdiction to other existing bodies through the tribunal's reforms, rationalization and conditions of service ordinance 2021. But this ordinance has had to face lots of criticisms. And to be specific, let's talk about a few criticisms that have been mentioned in the article. First, that the abolition of tribunals such as the film certification appellate was done without any stakeholder consultation. And definitely this consultation should have been taken in care of. And secondly, without conducting a prior judicial impact assessment. So as the Supreme Court had given the direction in the case of Roger Matthew versus South Indian Bank, that if at all, any particular tribunal is to be brought down or it has to be abolished. So for that, before doing so, a complete prior judicial impact assessment should be done as to what would be the judicial impact of such abolition of the tribunal. But it was not even done in this particular case of the abolition of film certification after the tribunal. Now, the second criticism is that it has fixed a four year tenure for chairpersons and members of tribunals, notwithstanding anything contained in any judgment order of decree of any court. So this has completely and on the face disregarded the Supreme Court direction for five year term in, in the case of Madras Bar Association versus Union of India, which was a 2020 case. So it seems to be a clear violation of the mandate or the direction which was given by the Supreme Court in this case. And the third criticism of this thing is that the center is yet to establish an, a national tribunals commission. So the idea actually in this article revolves around having a national tribunals commission. Please keep in mind that this is not something that we currently have as an institution right now. Rather, it is a suggestive measure that has been given in this article that in order to bring smoother functioning and better administration of the tribunals in the country, we should have a convergent authority, which is the National Tribunals Commission. So if at all we talk about it into detail, the idea of the NTC or the National Tribunals Commission was mooted or for the first time propounded in the case of L. Chandra Kumar versus Union of India in the year 1997. So it, if at all, uh, it is actually sought to be as a body which is an independent umbrella body to supervise the functioning of tribunals appointment of and the disciplinary proceedings against members and take care of the administrative and infrastructural needs to the tribunal. So basically it will be one kind of or one stop shop or one stop center for all the tribunals in the country, which would definitely bring in or usher in better functioning, smoother functioning, better disciplinary actions, better appointments, and also all the administrative and infrastructural needs of the tribunals would be taken care of. And the other benefits that have been provided about the NTC, if at all we have it in the future, is that first, it protects the independence and impartiality of the tribunals. 
Second, it provides uniform administration across all tribunals. Yes, of course, because when we have one single decision making body, the decisions are more expected to be in better place and also they are expected to be uniform in their nature. Thirdly, separation of administration and judicial functions of tribunals. And fourthly, it could set performance standard for efficiency of tribunals. And ultimately, it could also check whether or not these performance standards are being met by the tribunals or not. So this is something definitely a debate of the future. Let's see if in the coming times we, are, we would have the NTC or not. On this note, let's see what do we have for news in flash today. Firstly, World Hypertension Day is today. That is on 17th May. So it was initiated by the World Hypertension League on 14th May 2005 to not only raise awareness about hypertension, but also its factors and prevention methods. So the theme for the year 2021 is measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. Second, cyclone tote or the tokte, however you like to pronounce this. It has been classified as a very severe cyclonic storm and it is developed in the Arabian Sea is expected to hit the southern Gujarat on Tuesday, that is tomorrow. Now, why is it unique in its nature? It is the fourth cyclone in consecutive years to have developed in the Arabian Sea in pre-monsoon period. And thirdly, we have the Dongria Kond and the Bonda community. So the COVID-19 have worsened in certain areas inhabited by the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, which are in short known as the PVTGs in Odisha. So always and always, please keep in mind that the Dongria Kond and the Bonda PVTG community belong to which state of India? So the answer would be Odisha. So the Dongria, which belong to the Niamgiri Hill range of the Raigada district and the Bonda in the Bonda Hill of Malkangiri district have tested post positive. So the COVID has actually per perpetuated and has percolated even to these particularly vulnerable tribal groups in these states as well. With this, we are done for the day. We hope it was a good session for you. Thank you so much for staying tuned with Lossico. Please subscribe to our channels for such updates to come.